Ahoy, Let's Watchers! It's me, your Valiant Captain Vasco. In the last episode, we actually discovered something very exciting. Which is that we can now spend money to upgrade our Skylanders by giving them new abilities and attributes. That's pretty neat. Uh, that's why I'm actually able to do this guided teleportation, as it is called, in the shop. Um, with Phoenix Wright. I don't know why it is I always start these episodes with Phoenix Wright. It's actually kind of weird. I don't think I'll be using him much today because, uh, well, he had enough gold to buy that ability and still has a reasonable amount left over. Plus, he's almost reached level 2. I usually like to play my Skylanders uh, in such a way that my team levels up fairly evenly. It's very difficult to keep them exactly on par, but you can keep them relatively close if you cycle between them. Uh, that's why I keep shifting out different sub-teams for every level. Um, if you've taken any notice of that. But I think that we're gonna start off this level... Well, we're gonna start off this video. As I said last time, I wanted to do some upgrades, but I think the only upgrade that I can really do right now that I would like to do is to buy the Straw Pook Scarecrow ability for Stealth Elf. Um, this means that when she uses her, like, decoy ability, um, when it sort of wears off, her image turns into a scarecrow, and it continues to draw people's attention towards it, as well as their attack. So let's show that off quickly. So, like, remember, the glowing eyes are where she actually is, and she leaves behind a scarecrow. So, you know, apparently everyone's really easily fooled in this game, which makes a certain amount of sense, because if you've paid any attention to Chaos, he's not that bright, so I can't imagine his minions are much smarter than he is. Uh, anyway, I think I'm gonna need Sheik's help in this next level. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk to Flynn, and see what's up. Finally, an awesome balloon for an even more awesomer pilot. Mm. Boom! Awesome. Oh, Good it's work. got a fuel injected crocagator, a vacuum sealatron, and a jet steam I don't think you're supposed to inject oh, yeah. alligators or crocodiles so with fuel. I did it all myself. Even I think, a few parts I think over. there are and animal rights groups who would disagree with your opinions, sir. Uh, so yeah, why don't we take this balloon to the stormy stronghold? Okay, let's see what this baby can do. I hope it can still hit that rock. Aww. Clearly it's a detriment to his ship if he can't continue to hit that rock. He said it was the sign of a skilled pilot. I think you should take the propeller off and we'll just take our chances when we get there. Wowzers, now that's a twister. And it's ripping that castle to pieces. It's almost as impressive as me. Oh. If you're that impressive, how come you can't just stop the tornado? And now they're trying to harness its power. I guess. Welcome to Chapter 4, Stormy Stronghold. Well now, looky there. It's some kind of bridge. Of course, right now it's just a big bunch of giant swirling chunky things stuck in the vortex of a that killer tornado. Gross. But hey, all you gotta do is figure out how to rebuild it. Cake! Once again, the uh, translation of Flynn is, you go do the hard work, I'll stand here and look pretty. Um, now one thing I want to let you guys know is that I made it about halfway through this level during a recording and then had a pretty big technical issue. Um, so unfortunately I had to go to some pretty extreme lengths to be able to replay this level and show you where everything is. Uh, but the, the real downside of that more than the inconvenience to me is that uh, the stats and some of the treasure is not going to match up from what you guys have seen so far. Um, I think the biggest difference is that Spyro got up to level 2 because there's a magic uh, Skylander area here and he got a whole bunch of experience there and I can't undo it. Um, so sorry about that, he probably won't be getting some screen time for a little bit as a result of that. But uh, yeah, so first thing you want to do after breaking all the barrels at the start of this level is uh, break through the stone wall here. You can use any attack that does damage, nothing too tricky, and then you find your way over to here, and the first collectible of the level, a story scroll. A note from Hugo says, While everybody fears large, destructive tornadoes, smaller, friendlier ones are quite popular in Skylands. 
Mabu come from all over to throw unwanted items into the small tornadoes. Things like garbage, tax forms, and when possible, sheep. So basically, small tornadoes are the Skylands equivalents of goats, if my cartoon knowledge is to be believed. And, well, really, if I didn't know a thing or two about cartoons, would I be playing this game? I think not. So, you know, basic enemies here, we got Chompies and one of those Chompy dispensing plants whose name I continue to forget. Uh, it's not important, so I'll probably continue to refer to them as that. Bust open this gate. With my cowboy ninja skills. What up? Hey guys. Lucky for me, I don't have projectiles, so your air shield does not concern me. Your spears are still a little pointy for my liking, to be honest. It is kind of weird to be uh, fighting elves with my elf. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, since Sheik's already got her first upgrade and still has about 500 gold, I think it's time for her to take a rest. She's almost reached level 2 anyway. Let's switch in for uh, Jabu Jabu. Haven't seen him in a while, right? Cool. Now, he picked up some treasure during my first playthrough of this. Mostly here, to be honest. And again, I'm sorry that I can't undo that, but that's not the way Skylanders works. Um, so hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. It's, it's not that big a deal, but I'm kind of a uh, perfectionist, so there you go. Uh, let's dump this block out of the way, and we reveal a teleporter, which will take us upstairs, where we can dump another block down there. And, if we push this over here, we'll find our way to this treasure chest. Hmm, treasure! As a pirate, I am obligated to seek treasure where possible. And if you don't know what I mean when I say, as a pirate, clearly you haven't paid attention to the title card I'm using for this series, which depicts me as a pirate. That's supposed to be me, in the pirate costume that I actually own. Look it up! not what I meant to do. There was still more to be had up there. But I'll push this block out of the way and finish forming the bridge with it before popping back upstairs. Because uh, no harm, no foul, right? And here we find a hat box. What's in the box? Ooh, it's a fez. Well, I better put that on because fezes are cool. Yeah, check me out. Alright, now let's pop back upstairs real quick. Wow. Wow. Upper Reach is the name of this place, apparently. Gather some treasure there. Break down this fence. And we'll find ourselves face to face with a few enemies. There aren't. It's not unheard of for there to be enemies in a bonus area, but it's also not particularly common. So, um, that's something to keep in mind. It's not exactly something you could plan for, but, uh, if. If you have a Skylander who's low on health of the element needed to get in an element gate, you don't usually need to worry too badly, uh, is the basic point there, I guess. But now that we've picked up the treasure chest, some extra treasure, and a hat, I think we're uh, pretty much set for this area. Let's get back on the main trail and progress through this level, hopefully without uh, further technical complications. Uh, for any of you younger viewers out there, Technical complications basically means my computer blew up while trying to make this video. That's what happened. So, again, sorry about that, and uh, anything that doesn't quite match up, but I'm going to stop talking about it, because I don't want to dwell on it. And I want to focus on this level. Uh, so I don't think I've mentioned how these work. These are like bouncy plants, and uh, the things that they're surrounded by are like spear traps. So while the bouncy plants aren't terribly threatening by themselves, they don't do any damage, they just sort of nudge you in one direction. Uh, when you combine them with something like these traps, they can do you damage. Now the spears can deal damage to you if you're too close to them, and they're either going up or coming down. So you just want to keep a safe distance from them at all times if you want to avoid taking damage. It's pretty straightforward. Just be careful. Now here's something oh, unique to this level, pylons, young they're called master. lightning pylons. Now since I'm playing on the 360, the Xbox 360, uh, I can rotate the right stick in order to shut off the lightning pylons, which seem to be powering the storm that's torn this castle apart. 
we'll have to power down all of those in order to open the way to the end of this level. That's the basic premise here. A lot of levels have a gimmick of sorts. They're not usually too uh, game-changing or anything, but uh, that would be the one for this level, just so you know. I do like the hose attack. When I first read up on Gilgrunt, I thought it'd be kind of a lame attack, but uh, it has some pretty nice knockback and can keep enemies out of your hair for a while. It's uh, really nice, and it works fairly well with his uh, harpoon attacks, which deal more damage, so you can keep enemies away from you, and then deal them massive damage before they can come back to uh, attack you up close and personal. Stupid exploding plants. Uh, yeah, next to the bounce plant, there's a different type of plant, which explodes and deals a light amount of damage. It's not a big issue, but uh, they often put them in places where they're inconvenient, and you'll be attacked by the plant multiple times while trying to pick up some treasure or something. Let's see, I think, uh, no, maybe that's later on. Whatever. Not important. So yeah, here's the area where I had Spiral level up the first time I was playing through the level. And here's like the fourth fence we've encountered during this level. I feel like this place should have been called the Fortress of Fences or something. Because, uh, I don't know. It's not as much a stronghold as it is a weird castle with a bunch of forts and spears in it. And every time you deactivate a lightning pylon, it opens up uh, the next section of the level. There's gates sort of blocking your path up until then. And uh, this this area can be tricky if you're not prepared. It's sort of close quarters, so the, uh, the spear enemies can sneak up on you pretty quickly and even surround you, uh, dealing you a bunch of damage. But the enemies at this stage of the game are still fairly simple. Uh, as I've said, they get trickier later on and can pose serious problems even to seasoned video gamers, in my opinion. Like, I'm not the best person at video games, but uh, I, I know my way around, and uh, they still cause me some trouble. Now, you may have noticed before that uh, I took damage from that spear trap, even though the spears were most of the way down. These traps can be tricky and deal you damage even when you're not expecting it, so even though they don't deal a lot of damage and aren't uh, terribly problematic even if you get hit by them, as I said before, the key to them is really just being cautious. Um, but, uh, yeah, over here, we've got uh, another elemental gate, one for an air Skylander. As you recall, we met my air Skylander last time, Sonic Boom, who I've nicknamed Guile, for Street Fighter obvious reasons. Now, every, every, uh, Skylander element type has a unique way of teleporting you to through one of these elemental gates. Uh, I find that the, the Air Skylander mode, the little tornado, is the most annoying. It's kind of difficult to see, and you kind of have to stand still for it to work, and sometimes it's just finicky. It can take a while to transport you to the uh, bonus area, so like it's, it's just kind of frustrating to like sit there and just like wait for it to activate. Now, there's a lot of spear traps in this area, so remember, just be careful, but they don't deal a ton of damage, so, you know, it's not a huge concern. Uh, there's also a lot of these bounce pads. Now, th this is one of the areas where the game falls a little bit short for me, um, because, like, I don't mind the light platforming elements. I think they're actually kind of fun. The issue I have with them is that uh, these bounce pads, they're, they're really annoying. It, these sections would be a lot more fun if you could just jump. Uh, later on, certain Skylanders can even unlock the ability to fly, and uh, they still can't make those jumps any easier than a ground-based Skylander. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm making my way through this gauntlet uh, so that I can go back and press that button that you saw just a moment ago. I'll point it out again when we get there. Um, the reason being... I'll, I'll just continue to explain this as I go. Uh, be careful with these jumps. A lot of them are kind of close, so uh, if you don't time them just right and position them in just the right way, you'll miss them and have to go back to the start of the bounce pads, and that's no fun. So just uh, try and get a lay of the land before you start bouncing around, or else you'll take several attempts through here. So the idea was to uh, bounce back over to this button, which lowers these stones on this edge of the cliff here. Uh, now that I've done that, I can take this troll bomb to the far end of this bonus section, and uh, bounce up here, throw the bomb at this wall that's marked by a purple bomb marker, which indicates that a troll bomb will blow it up and open up a path to a new area. 
Now, anytime you need a troll bomb to proceed through the, uh, the actual story of a level, it will be clearly marked. But every now and then you'll come across some, some bonus area uh, that isn't marked, but could still be destroyed by troll bombs. And there is actually one here in this section, which uh, I will be sure to show off in just a moment. However, right now, I've got myself a new fancy hat. Uh, it's like a Lady Sun hat, so it seems perfect for this Lady Skylander I have here. Of course, it's cumbersome and ridiculous, but, uh, you know, I think it I think it suits her nicely. I wouldn't want to wear it in battle myself, but uh, she's a lot stronger than I am anyway, so I think she'll handle it just fine. Now, I'm taking this path back because it saves me the trouble of having to bounce my way up to where the troll bomb is again the way I did the first time. Uh, I'll need the troll bomb to unlock the last little bit of treasure here in this section, as I think I mentioned. And um, you're going to have to be quick about it. And I'm going to try and do this in one shot, but uh, it's kind of tricky. So it's it helps to like bounce along this path because it'll sort of get you where you're going as quickly as possible. And then you're going to want to throw the bomb uh, before it explodes, or else you'll have to make multiple passes at it. It's really easy to have the bomb explode on you, because it's, uh, it's tricky to navigate the path back here uh, quickly enough to do it before the bomb explodes. But uh, give it a couple tries, and you'll probably get it done. It's not too difficult, but uh, it's worth it, because you get a couple hundred gold from that. That's a nice score, especially this early in the game. Um, but yeah, since Guile's already level 2 and has a bunch of treasure after going through the section twice, this is where my uh, computer crashed before. So everything else in the rest of the level I haven't gone over yet, and my commentary will hopefully not have any holes in it. Stronger in this zone. Um, but as I was saying, Guile's in pretty good shape for the moment, so why don't we switch to Phoenix Wright? We haven't actually used him in a level for a little bit. Hi there. Ah, uh, yeah, one of the tricky things about the teleportation with uh, Sunburn, also known as Phoenix Wright, to people who've been watching the series so far, is that uh, while you would expect it might be able to help you get around obstacles, uh, it frequently will be stopped by walls or any obstruction, any like barrier in your way. So I can't hop to the other side of this fence, even though normally my teleportation can clearly take me further than that. Um, that's to keep me from cheating my way through levels, I think, is, is the reason they made that decision. And I think that's fair. But uh, it's something to keep in mind, because every now and then it'll trip you up while you're trying to avoid an enemy's attack with the teleportation. So, uh, yeah, just keep it in mind, as I said. Uh, now, in the last episode, we introduced these Goliath guys, but I didn't really make a... Uh, I didn't really have a chance to go into great detail about how they work. Um, if, you, if you continue to damage them... They really can't do you a lot of harm, because when you damage them, it keeps them from attacking. And they're only... they're sort of indestructible while attacking, but normally they take damage just like anything else. They don't even have, like, you know, extra armor or anything to reduce that damage. So, the key to them is usually just, um, like a continuous attack. Just deal them as much damage as you can as quickly as possible, and they won't give you too much trouble. Um, but you do want to be careful because they're large and they're, you know, reasonably in charge. They can do a lot of damage, and, uh, well, as you saw here, Sunburn took a lot of damage in that fight because, uh, I got caught a little off guard. I forgot there was one of those guys on this path. Luckily, there's a pretzel to, uh, replenish my health here. And, uh, yeah. As usual, I'm checking for treasure whenever possible. Oh crap, gonna get hit by spears. Whew, just barely made it out alive. Well, not alive. They don't do that much damage. Oh no, another elf ambush. And this time they're coming from every direction. Hmm, I think I know how to handle this. I'll let them get in close, and then teleport. I think one of the best things you can do if you're playing with Sunburn like I am is to sort of trick all the enemies into clustering themselves into one closely packed group. Because when you do that, uh, the teleportation effect will deal damage to multiple targets all at once. Which means a lot of damage on a lot of enemies, and you can take care of them much more quickly. It's a nice little tactic for anyone who's 
struggling to use Sunburn, which I would totally find understandable, because he's very difficult to use, in my opinion. At least before you've had a chance to upgrade him fully. Um, so here we go. We've got another treasure chest. I'm going to let Sunburn have this one. Why not? Because as I said, uh, it helps to have him upgraded, and the treasure will help him do that more quickly. I promise later on I won't be fussing so much about who gets what treasure, but in the beginning it makes a difference. You want to upgrade your weaker characters more readily. Uh, this treasure, on the other hand, I'm going to give to another winged friend of mine. Alduin! Now, she didn't get a ton of treasure the first time around, and he just got a full treasure chest, so here we go. She'll get the, uh, what's this one called? The Ancient Carillon. I don't know what that means. I think it means fancy spinning device. Let's, uh, let's play with Alduin for a little while. I think this is the last pylon in the level, which should take us to the uh, center of the fort. Yes, we've accomplished our mission to rebuild the bridge. And there's the eternal air source we've been looking for all along. That will help us start to rebuild the core of light and fend off the darkness that chaos has brought to bear on the Skylands. Uh, where does the bridge start? Oh, it's back here. I forgot that. Right, so. Ooh, another new enemy. The Windbag the Genie. These ones don't show up a lot, but as I recall, they're kind of a pain. I think they do a lot of damage. I guess it's not that bad. I don't know. Oh no, that was a lot of damage. It did 30 to me with one shot. It's a lot for uh, an enemy this early on. There isn't really a trick to them, although I think it's possible that their um, spinning whirlwind nature uh, protects them from certain projectiles. I'm not sure of that, but I think that might be one of the reasons why they're considered a harder enemy by the uh, people who make this game. Here we go. Take out the witch with my long-range lightning breath attack. As you can see, there's a soul gem hidden here behind these bars. I'll get that in a minute. I'll need to find a switch to lower the bars before I can uh, go in there and grab it. But I'm gonna gather up some uh, experience in the meantime, because Alduin's actually lagging behind a lot of my other characters. Or at least she was a minute ago. She's a little bit closer to caught up at this point. Watch out for those exploding plants, and these bouncy ones, which can make them more of an issue. They present you sort of an obstacle course here, uh, with all these bouncy things and uh, hazards. Which is, uh, that's the trick to getting that uh, soul gem. And you'll see more clearly in a minute why, what I mean by that. A lot of enemies here. Oh, oh, better dodge. Yeah, you want to stay out of the way of his charge attack if you can manage it. Otherwise, as you can see, you'll take a lot of damage. But yeah, if you keep attacking him like this, you can keep him from charging. Which is what I was trying to explain earlier. Hopefully that was clear. And luckily there's some cake to refresh Alduin after that unfortunate incident. So here we go. Here's that button I was looking for before, and it will show that the bars to that, uh, that little enclosure will open up. Now, I really like using Alduin for this bit because her dash attack is really quick and uh, helps you avoid some of these hazards a little bit more easily. She doesn't avoid them outright, like if she if she's using her dash, she'll still hit certain things, like the, uh, the bouncy plants. But uh, it helps her get here before the time runs out and the gate will close again if you don't make it in time. So I recommend using a fast Skylander if you have one that seems to move particularly quickly. Use it for that. There aren't a lot of timed things in this game, but um, you know, you gotta be prepared for them when they come up, and this is one of them. So here's the soul gem for Warnado, who's a air Skylander, who's also part turtle. Uh, let's not preview him. I don't think I'll be previewing most of them, to be honest. I just wanted to show off the first one to demonstrate uh, what that means. Because it's going to keep asking me that every time I pick up a soul gem if you want to preview them. So now you have some idea of what it is. Um, but yeah, you can actually find these videos online. So if, you, if you're really curious about how the Skylanders work, yeah, you can find that information pretty easily. Alright, here's a, uh, here's a little bit of a trap here. There's some 
Uh, there's some meat if you take damage during the spear trap bit. Um, but really, if you just if you're careful about it and you just follow the spears as they're coming up or going down, then you can uh, you can get along there without taking very much damage at all. I didn't take any damage. And here we go. I believe this is what constitutes the final fight for this level. Normally, when you're um, up to Man, this is going to be tricky with that Air Force field. Oh, and there's two of those charging guys? Jeez. That's rough stuff. Um, but as I was saying, normally, when you're, like, in a level trying to gather an eternal source of some element, there's, like, one boss creature or some confrontation with some of uh, Chaos's minions. Um, here is one of the few instances where that's not the case. Uh, I think it's because they're still sort of easing new players into the game. Whew. I just took a lot of damage all at once there by being knocked into one attack by like three others. So let's give Alduin a little break so she doesn't get uh, knocked out here. Let's switch back to Jabu Jabu. I could still use some experience. Took a bunch of damage, but it was worth it because I managed to clear out one of those horrible goliaths. Crap. Just barely avoided that one. Wow, he's not taking any damage from me right now for some reason. Oh, the hose is working. Jeez, this guy is just taking a real punishment. There we go. Finally got him out of the way. What is that? More uh, tornado to gin, guys? I do not remember this section being this difficult. I mean, in fairness, the first time I was playing through this game, I had a smaller selection of Skylanders, which meant they were all getting more experience um, over the course of my playthrough. So that may be a factor here, but, uh, you know, even though it's not a boss, it is a lot of enemies, and some of them are tricky, like those Goliaths. Um, so if you don't have the right Skylander for the job, this can be an ordeal. But really, you just want to try and dodge as, as best you can. Take out the small guys first, so you're only dealing with a few guys, like I had at the end there. And uh, it's not too challenging. Let's pick, up, uh, let's pick up our first Eternal Element Source and start rebuilding the Core of Light. Alright, completed the Stormy Stronghold. Now I think since we got a new Eternal Element Source, we should get a little cutscene when we get back to the ruins. Well done, young Portal Master. Your retrieval of the Eternal Air Source has summoned me back to these ruins. There is strong magic in this place, and by its power, the Eternal Sources know how to combine with the ancient machinery of this island to recreate the Core of Light. Which is really lucky for us, because we have no idea how to rebuild it. Ooh, what? Oh, look, Lord Chaos. They found the Eternal Air Source. I can see they found the Eternal Air Source. You fool! But look who's with them. Eon! But how can this be? I blew him up! Kaboom! Splat! Done! But look at him! Well, at least he doesn't have his body. Right! Obviously somebody's helping him. But who? And what are they up to? Well, I'm no expert, as you know. Uh, but there must be another Portal Master somewhere. They're probably rebuilding the Core of Light. What?! It does seem like the obvious we thing to do. We can't let that happen. Find the other eternal sources. I don't care where they are. Just get them! The eternal air source has been integrated into the core. Excellent work. Oh, this is coming along very nicely indeed. But I'll need some time to figure out our next step. Why don't you go investigate the docks? There seem to be a real ruckus coming from over there. 
Alright, so this will end up being our first introduction to, um, basically the way the rest of the game plays out. Um, what happens is, there's usually, I think it's like three is sort of the average, is that there's like three levels that sort of encompass your quest for each of the, uh, eternal sources. So, like, one is sort of your introduction to a place, you're usually helping someone out who's being pestered by Chaos or his minions. Uh, then the second one, you're often looking for some component, device, or information to help you find where the uh, Eternal Source is. And then finally, some level where you're hunting down the Source itself and uh, confronting something or other to try and obtain it. So, you know, first we had our introductory level, then we had three levels leading our way to the air source, and the same will be true next time when we meet a new character and learn the situation going on with him and his people. Um, but for now, it's just one thing I want to do. I got a lot of gold here for my friend Gilgrunt. I want to upgrade him a little bit. So uh, I'm going to upgrade the power hose, because it's been really useful for me so far in this playthrough. So let's buy that. And actually, here's something really important that we can get now. Um, by beating that last level, we've caused this thing to appear. It looks kind of like a butterfly, but it's actually a sapphire with wings. I smell you have a winged sapphire. It is a happy gem. Can dance with more powers for smaller number of gold. Lucky party. More winged sapphires in this happy place. Ten of their secret campings for you to find. Winged sapphires like to say hello when they meet the fairies. The more that say this, the smaller gold number I need from Skylander for happy dancing. So the translation for that fairy gibberish just now was that uh, there's ten of these winged sapphires in the game. I'm going to help you track them down, although I don't immediately know where they all are. I'll figure it out just for you guys. And every time you pick one up, you get a slight discount at the store here. And it costs less gold to buy every upgrade available to your character. Not just like, you don't like spend them. It's just every time you pick up a Winged Sapphire, it just, it just is a general discount to any upgrade you would buy in the shop. Um, don't quite have enough for Harpoon Repeater, but uh, I suppose I can upgrade the damage for both of my primary attacks. And then I think I'll be saving up for a special ability of Guild Grunts in the near future. But since he got a bunch of treasure and leveled up, we may not be seeing him again for a little while. Because as I said, I like to try and keep my uh, character advancements even as I'm playing through the game. That's how I like to play Skylanders personally. Same way I play Pokemon. And again, it's one of the similarities I find between the two games. But uh, yeah, that wraps up our venture to the Stormy Stronghold. Join me again next time when we venture forth and start looking for another Eternal Source to continue rebuilding the Core of Light and fending off chaos. Thanks for joining me guys, and I'll see you back here at the Ruins next time.